65 on the basis of these electronegativity values, which have the most polar bonds. The most polar bonds are going to be the ones where there's the greatest difference in electronegativity. So let's just calculate for the pH bond and the HO bond what the electronegativity differences are, and whichever one has the highest will be the highest polarity or the most polar. So P and H, that would be 2.2 minus 2.1, so we get 0.1. It doesn't matter that there's three Ps because we're just looking in each of these cases at the difference of one of the bonds, P to H. So the fact that there's three H's doesn't really matter. We're just looking at that pH difference. So we get 0.1, not great. H2O would be 3.5 for O minus 2.2 for H. We get 1.3, which if you think about it makes sense given that the reason why water exhibits hydrogen bonding is due to the strong electronegativity difference between H and O, which leads to a quite a strong dipole moment, which basically means it's hydrogen bonding. So it, it kind of makes sense that that would be one of the, the higher ones, if not the answer. HBr would be 2.8 minus 2.2, so that's 0.6, so we can get rid of A and C. P4, you just got P's linked to P's, so that's just zero, there's no difference, it's nonpolar in fact. PBr3 would be 2.8 minus 2.1, 0.7, no good. So best answer here is B. 66, when is potassium hydroxide a good conductor of electric current? So the main thing you wanna know is that these, this is essentially an, an ionic compound because you've got your K plus and your OH minus. And so in, a, in its solid state as a salt, it's not going to conduct electricity, but if you melt it, if you make it molten, if you make it liquid, it will conduct electricity because essentially those ions are no longer tethered in a crystal structure and they can move around and the movement of ions equals electricity movement, basically, electricity conducting. So not only does it melt or does it conduct electricity to ionic compounds in the liquid or molten state, but also in solution, right? These are, this is an example of a strong electrolyte and any electrolyte is going to conduct electricity. And again, it's because those ions are free to roam. And when you have ions, whether it's in liquid state of this ionic compound or in a solution, whenever ions are free to roam, that's when you're gonna get conduction of electricity. So for this one, we're gonna get E. 67, in which of the liquids are the intermolecular forces of attraction the strongest? So if you have strong intermolecular forces, that means you are um, compound, your, your, your substance is going to stick together and not stick together more in the solid and liquid states, right? It's going to be something that's going to cohere a bit more and it's going to take more energy or higher temperature in order to melt them or vaporize them. And in the case of vapor pressure, the same thing applies. If you have, let's say, a liquid and you've got vapor molecules, you've got gas molecules leaving it, that's your vapor pressure. If this has got strong forces between the molecules, it's gonna hold more of them in. You're gonna have fewer of these molecules escaping the liquid to become gas, and so you'll have a lower vapor pressure. This is all to say that the stronger, stronger the intermolecular forces, the lower the vapor pressure, because you're gonna have less of that vapor escaping. And so that's why the answer here is gonna be A, because it has the lowest vapor pressure. The strongest vapor pressure, E, the most volatile of these compounds, is gonna have relatively weak intermolecular forces because those forces are so weak, they can't hold the, the liquid together, essentially. And so you've got the molecules just leaving the solution to become gas. It's not really well contained, whereas something like A, low vapor pressure, things are more well contained. And so that's why we would get A for 67. 68. Which, uh, what are the oxidation states shown by these elements? A little bit of outside knowledge, not exactly sure you would need to know this. Um, I guess the best thing to note for this is that the, we'll take nitrogen. The configuration is 2s2, 2p5. So if you didn't know that the answer was C just based on experience and kind of knowing what compounds these things form, you might note that this guy can either gain three electrons, become minus three and get a noble gas configuration, or it can quote unquote lose five electrons, though as a side note, it's never really gonna lose five electrons. But in any event, it can lose these five electrons to go back down to 1s2 to be isoelectronic with helium. So right, it can either gain those three electrons or lose five of its valence electrons 
to become noble gas states. And so that might help you know, okay, that's why it'll be like plus three and minus five. I mean, or yeah, plus three and minus five. This is not exact because again, it doesn't actually lose five electrons, but it's just one way you could work it out. Again, I'm not super convinced you would see this as a question or something like it, but you know, if you did, that's one way you can work it out. Just look at those valence electrons.